Okay guys, welcome back. This is the second part of chapter 17. We had to, to split it up between two, uh, two different videos. Um, so we'll just pick up where we left off with today's in a, a patient accounts receivable. So what we're looking at here is just how well we're doing on collecting on patient accounts that are open with our facility. Um, and just as kind of to, to let you know, this is going to be called a couple different things. So you may see the terminology differ. Um, depending on what organization that you're with, but you may see this called the average collection period or the ACP, um, or you could see it called the days in patient accounts receivable, or you could see it called the day sales outstanding. So all three of those are meaning the same thing, um, just a different way to say it. So when we talk about uh, days in patient accounts receivable, we're talking about, again, how long um, an account remains open before we're able to receive the money owed on that account. So we're going to look at net patient's account receivable. Uh, we're going to divide that by our net patient service revenue divided by 365. So again, we're dividing by 365 uh, because we are looking at this in terms of days, 365 days a year, so we need to kind of break that down by day. <clears throat> When we start pulling the numbers, uh, patient accounts receivable, we're going to take 21,840 and divide that by um, the product or what we get out of 103,174 uh, 103, divided by 365, which should give us around 77 days. Now, if we're looking at the industry average of 64 days, how we're going to interpret this is we're, we're you know, about uh, 10 to, to 13 days behind the industry average in terms of collecting on accounts that are uh, open with our organization. So this is going to cue us in as, as financial managers or supervisors or leaders within the organization that we need to really look at our collection process um, and maybe do or look at some ways to do some process redesign so that we can bring down this number of days to at least the industry average or the benchmark where we want to be. Now, why wouldn't we include premium revenue in this? So remember, premium revenue are capitated payments or patients, and we don't include them or that amount in our patients' accounts receivable because we've already collected on those services um, before they were provided. So essentially, we've created a liability on ourselves, um, but we haven't, nothing's owed to us. We owe something. So that's why we don't include premium revenue within this figure. So moving over, uh, just kind of a review of each of the um, asset management ratios. So we're going to look at fixed assets, which measure, measure just our fixed items like property and equipment. Um, we're going to look at total assets, which is the utilization of all assets, both property and equipment, fixed and non-fixed, and then accounts receivable, just how, we, how well we do at managing those accounts that are owed to us. So switching over to operator analysis, uh, operating indicator analysis, we're looking more at talking about our operations though, so that we can better deal with any financial issues that may come up as managers. Um, and just it's a way for us to use data to explain our financial con condition at this at a current moment in time. So the first thing we look at is net patient, uh, net price per discharge. This is going to give us the average revenue we collect on all patient discharges. So net patient revenue uh, divided by total discharges is going to give us about $4,800, which sounds really good, meaning that we're bringing in $4,800 for each discharge that we send out the door um, until we look at the industry standard of $5,056. So what this is telling us is that, uh, you know, just what you can kind of surmise, but we're collecting less than the, than the industry average. Um, so we need to, one, figure out why we are collecting less in terms of industry average. Um, let's see, I'm not sure what happened. Um, <clears throat> so why are we collecting less than the industry average? You know, is it because we have a lower than average case mix index where we see less severe patients? Um, you know, what could, what could, could the reasons be, um, and to, to understand this a little bit better, we probably would be beneficial to understand the cost per discharge. So not only how much revenue we're bringing in per discharge, but what is that discharge costing us? 
So occupancy rate, um, another one that we're going to look at. And again, too, you're going to need a little bit more uh, information than what's presented on the financial sheet. So you're going to need things like your discharges per day, um, and in this case, you know, our hospital bed size, uh, because we're going to look at occup occupancy percentage. So we're looking at how well we utilize uh, our beds, which we consider a fixed asset. So when we look at the fixed asset turnover, we were sitting at right about 0.98 compared to 2.2 for the industry average, which worked to tell us that we're not really using our assets productively. Um, but what I would prefer to use in, uh, what, what I would just prefer to use that may give you a better view into how we're doing, um, is using something called the occupancy percentage rate, which is what we're talking about. Uh, the fixed asset is affected by inflation and um, different mechanisms within accounting, but occupancy is not, so it may give us a truer picture of what's going on. So when we look at occupancy percentage um, or occupancy rate, we're taking inpatient days. Again, not something that you'll find on your financial sheets, um, but you will be able to pull this data from some source and divide that by our number of staffed beds, so not how many beds are in the hospital at that time, but how many do we have staffed, uh, because we may have a unit closed down for some reason, um, so we would take those out of the equation and multiply that by 365. Um, so we'll say for purposes of this example that our inpatient days are 95,061, and we're gonna divide that by 450 times 365, so we should get 57.9%. So what does this mean in terms of when we compare it to our industry average of 45.4%? Um, it's telling us that we're using uh, our assets in terms of our fixed assets of our hospital beds uh, more productively than what we see across, across the, the industry average. And again, like I said, um, occupancy rate may give you that better picture in to um, to how we use our assets versus fixed asset turnover, uh, simply because fixed asset turnover can be affected by inflation and, and different types of accounting mechanisms. The next we'll look at is um, average length of stay. Um, this is one you guys hear a lot about. Uh, so ALOS, or average length of stay, is gonna equal your inpatient days divided by your total discharges. And scroll that on down. Um, so we're looking at the days, you know, just like it says, the days the average patient is hospitalized with each admission. So we're going to end up with 5.2 days or 